Welcome to the Amateur Extra Element 4 License Study. We are on sub-element 4 Delta. This deals more with digital stuff in your radio. And we're talking about digital noise reduction. What problem can occur when using an automatic notch filter, ANF, to remove interfering carriers while receiving CW signals? That is going to result in the removal of CW signal as well as the interfering carrier. That is one problem that can occur with an auto notch filter is that it might notch out who you're trying to receive as well. On single sideband, that notch filter reduces the, the gain of the single sideband coming through significantly significantly it's really annoying which of the following types of noise can often be reduced by a digital noise reduction or dnr well all of these choices are correct that could be broadband white noise ignition noise power line noise they can reduce all of that which of the following types of noise are removed by a noise blanker a noise blanker only removes impulse noise and I use a noise blanker in my Jeep because my ignition system is super noisy so I have to use the noise blanker at all times how can conducted noise from an automobile battery charging system be suppressed and that is by installing ferrite chokes on the charging system leads. Well, guess what? My Jeep also has that problem. I don't have chokes on it as of this recording. I could reduce quite a bit of that noise if I would put some ferrite chokes on the charging system leads. So that's running from the alternator to the battery. That would also help. Probably replacing the alternator would help too. There's a little bit of a whine in it. What is used to suppress radio frequency interference, or RFI, from a line-driven AC motor? That is a brute force AC line filter in series with the motor's power leads. So that is something you're going to have to buy, a brute force AC line filter. You're, if you got AC motors around your house, just don't cook and play radio at the same time. How about that? All right. What type of electrical interference can be caused by computer network equipment? Birdies! That appearance of unstable, modulated, or unmodulated signals at specific frequencies. And you, you will get that with switching power supplies. When I charge one of my parks on the air batteries with a 10 amp charger, that 10 amp charger wipes out HF pretty much across the band, uh, across the whole gamut just about. Uh, from my IC7300, from 80 meters, 160 meters, all the way up through 10 meters, it's almost impossible to use while charging. So it is definitely a nasty, nasty RFI producer. Which of the following can cause shielded cables to radiate or receive interference? Now, these are known as common mode currents on the shield and conductors. And you can mitigate some of those issues with common mode currents by putting ferrite beads or ferrite cores along the outside or making an ugly ballon. There's, there's multiple ways to mitigate some of those issues so common mode currents on the shield and conductors what current flows equally on all conductors of an unshielded multi-conductor cable that is also common mode current so it flows equally on all conductors and that's common mode current what undesirable effect can occur when using a noise blanker? Now, this is a problem that I also have in the Jeep. Strong signals may be distorted and appear to cause spurious emissions. 
So you get some weird sound effects sometimes if you got somebody really strong and that noise blanker's on. It's crazy. Which of the following can create intermittent loud roaring or buzzing AC line interference? All of these choices are correct. And if you have buzzing AC line interference or that loud roaring noise, it's annoying and sometimes very difficult to locate. It could be arcing contacts in a thermostatically controlled device. A defective doorbell or doorbell transformer inside a nearby residence. See, that's probably what it could be. I've gotten close to mine with a detector. It may not be my doorbell transformer, <laughs> but it could be. Or a malfunctioning illuminated illuminated advertising display. That is not all of the choices that could cause that, but out on this test, those are the ones that are correct. They all are. Uh, finding AC line interference, it's, it's a bane of our existence. What could be the cause of local AM broadcast band signals combining to generate spurious signals on the MF or HF bands? That's medium frequency and high frequency bands. This is wild, y'all. Nearby corroded metal connections are mixing and re-radiating the broadcast signals. So those corroded metal connections are sort of acting like a, a detector diode almost. That's your rain gutters. If your rain gutters have a um, rusty section in them, then they could possibly cause AM broadcast to combine and cause interruptions to your radio. That is something else that I have never looked in around my house is I don't know if there are any AM broadcast stations near me. I could check that out. Okay, here we go. What causes interference received as a series of carriers at regular in intervals across a wide frequency range? These are switch mode power supplies. Guess what we have a lot of around here? Those little blocks for your phones, those are all tiny and usually very inexpensive switch mode power supplies. Guess what charges my 10 amp or 100 amp hour LifePo 4 battery? A 10 amp switch mode power supply. Uh, so you'll, those uh, carriers, we call those birdies. And when you're scrolling and you hear, ew, 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 that's, that's birdies. You can look for a switch mode power supply somewhere that's making that noise. Having a portable transceiver can help you kind of go find those. Where should a station AC surge protector be installed? And the correct answer is on a single point ground panel. Now the single point ground panel is, is usually supposed to be located on the outside of the house. So you would want that to be in a weather protected box. I, I, I googled some, some pictures of what single point looks like and you can see that this panel has all of the grounding for that station in one place. Everything to the bottom of this is unprotected. So when lightning strikes, boom, but as soon as it hits this single point ground plane or ground panel, then that is what is supposed to absorb those differences in voltage. So AC surge protector, single point ground panel. Are we all going to have that? No. It, 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 that is probably one of the most difficult things to implement into a station, especially when your station's nowhere near where the antennas come in. What is the purpose of a single point ground panel? That is to ensure all lightning protectors activate at the same time. So if they all activate at the same time, it limits that potential difference after that. It's not always the lightning that kills, but the potential difference caused by that lightning. If everything raises, rises and falls at the same time, you're good. But if something rises and the other thing stays the same, now you have a difference in potential. And that difference in potential is going to flow somewhere, and that's usually what kills your rigs. 
I hope this has been helpful. I hope that I've been right at least most of the time with the explanations. I've done a lot of reading and research for this section. From here on out, it doesn't get much easier. So y'all stick with it. Keep going over the answers. You can do this. I encourage you, you can do this. I'm Robbie W1RCP. I think it's time for a nap. 73.